The next item of business is a debate on motion 5155 in the name of Ben McPherson on Social Security Additional Payments Bill UK legislation. I invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons. And I call on Ben McPherson to speak to and move the motion up to seven minutes, Minister. Thank you, President Officer. The UK cost of living crisis is of deep concern to people across Scotland and, of course, to all of us who serve them. That is, well, that is why, as well as taking uh, a, a wide set of actions ourselves, totalling around £3 billion, the Scottish Government has continually urged the UK Government in good faith to use the powers at their disposal to address the unprecedented increases in the cost of living. On the 26th of May, the Chancellor of the Exchequer announced in the House of Commons a range of interventions to support people struggling financially, <coughs> and we welcome these and continue to welcome them. This included a number of interventions on Social Security, including an additional £650 in cost of living payments for those on means-tested benefits. It also included a disability cost of living payment worth £150 to be paid from September to those in receipt of devolved non-means-tested disability benefits. People who receive child disability benefit and adult disability, sorry, people who receive child disability payment, I correct, and adult disability payment delivered by Social Security Scotland will be among those entitled to the sum. The UK Government has said that approximately 8 million people across the United Kingdom will receive extra payments. To enable this, the UK Government has introduced the Social Security Additional Payments Bill in the UK Parliament. The UK Government has not requested the Scottish Parliament's consent for this bill. It is their view that the provisions in the bill are reserved matters as temporary additional payments intended to respond to the rising costs of living. However, it is my view that the payments as a form of assistance provided to individuals who have a short-term need for financial support to avoid a risk to their well-being can be legislated for within the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. It is therefore the Scottish Government's view that the bill relates to devolved matters. That is why it is necessary to lodge a legislative consent motion, uh, although the UK Government has not requested one. In doing so, uh, we will ensure the devolution settlement is properly respected and, importantly, that a precedent for overriding the devolution settlement is not established. The only alternative to a legislative consent motion would be to pass legislation in the Scottish Parliament to an extremely truncated timescale. The legislation would need to come into force by the 30th of June to match the UK Government's timetable and ensure that payments can be made when intended. Attempting to pass legislation in such an expedited fashion, of course, carries risk, in our view, too great a risk. It is important that people in Scotland receive the financial support that the UK Government announced on the 26th of May as soon as possible. And it is my view that introducing legislation in the Scottish Parliament is not necessary nor proportionate in the circumstances when a legislative consent motion is a suitable legislative vehicle which exists to quickly implement the payments UK-wide. Providing legislative consent to the UK Social Security Additional Payments Bill is the advisable course of action, and I therefore move this motion in my name and hope Parliament will support it. Thank you. I now call on Jeremy Balfour. <clears throat> uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, President Officer, we have many uh, debates in this chamber which are constructive and helpful. I have seen no reason why we are debating this tonight. We are going to, in a few minutes' time, all vote for this, and we are all going to be grateful for the money that we are receiving from the Westminster Government. The only reason we are debating this is, I am afraid, SNP grievance in regard to Westminster doing something for disabled people compared to this Scottish Government. When this came to committee, no SNP member spoke about this. They all welcomed it and were happy to accept it. So we are seeing the SNP Government bringing forward more grievance against Westminster. What we should be doing today is thanking the Westminster Government, thanking the DWP for bailing them out yet Again, let's see what they're doing. The UK Government is introducing a 650 cost of living payment for every household on means-tested benefits. 
The UK Government is introducing a £300 pensioner cost for living payment for every pensioner household in receipt of winter fuel payment. The UK Government is introducing a £150 disability cost of living payment to those in receipt of disability benefit. And I should say at this point, I will benefit from that myself. And finally, the, this equates to 1,200 for those on the lowest incomes, around one third of all households. What has the Scottish Government done? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. What, what the Scottish Government should be doing is rather than this grievance moaning policy, is actually take responsibility for the benefits that they are running. Instead of what we're doing, they're handing them back to do the DWP to say we're not ready to deal with it. Can you please bear us out and look after us again? And finally, presiding officer, what we should be absolutely worried about is that the IFS are predicting a 3.5 billion gap in the SNP finances by 2026-2027. Shouldn't that be what Scottish Government is concentrating on? Isn't that what Scottish Government should be trying to bridge that gap rather than slagging off the Westminster Government? The Westminster Government has reached out to those who are most vulnerable in our society. Will the Scottish Government accept it? Of course we will, but only with the grievance that comes after it. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call on Pam Duncan Glancy. Thank you, President Officer. Across the country, households are facing a cost of living crisis. Bills are rocketing, the cost of petrol is rising with no sign of stopping, and food prices are sky high. Money is going nowhere near as far as it used to. And so, of course, additional help is welcome, and we support that additional help and the bill that brings it. But it should not have taken as long as it has for the Tories to be dragged kicking and screaming into action. And grateful is not exactly the emotion that I think many people will feel. Um, I would imagine it's more a sense of relief and frustration. I welcome the moves to push this legislation through the UK parliamentary process as fast as possible so that there's money in people's pockets by July the 14th. But let's be honest, had ministers there listened to the Labour Party, acted sooner and uprated benefits by a measure closer to inflation, they could have avoided forcing people into months of uncertainty and struggle. The cost of living crisis is already stinging. Had this action been taken quicker, people would not have been left to suffer, to accumulate debt, to sacrifice other costs, or in some cases choose between heating and eating. We on these benches know that we cannot rely on a Tory government to support disabled people or people in poverty. In fact, when we break it down, all they're actually doing by giving disabled people an additional £150 is replacing money they took from them in other ways, like failing to uplift legacy benefits or making those on PIP, DLA and attendance allowance ineligible for warm homes discount. But they have at least recognised there are additional costs associated with being a disabled person and built this policy to reflect that the same cannot be said of the Scottish Government. In 2018, Scope found that Scots disabled people spent on average £632 a month on disability-related expenses, including uses of heating. One in five disabled adults face additional costs of over £1,000 a month, and these are the highest excess costs across the UK. Disabled people also have fewer savings than non-disabled people. And once all of these costs are taken into account, half a million disabled people and their families in Scotland are living in poverty. That is 48% of all the people in Scotland living in poverty, despite disabled people only representing 22% of the population. And so while I, of course, welcome any money that the UK government's long overdue recognition um, uh, coming from the UK government and the long overdue recognition of that need for targeted support, particularly in a cost of living crisis, let me also be clear that what is being provided because of this and the previous actions of the Tory government is not coming close to meeting need. The same goes for the additional money given to pensioners. Again, it is absolutely right to recognise that older people need more support, but all the Tories are doing with this new £300 cost of living payment for pensioners is putting money back in the pockets they themselves emptied by allowing a £500 real terms cut to state pensions. With the rising costs, even this additional payment will still leave pensioners hundreds of pounds worse off. Those on pension credit can, of course, claim the £650, but the impact of this is stifled but significantly by levels of low uptake. So to make sure this money gets to those it's intended, both governments must ensure and promote uptake. President officer, except for the Tory benches, I think we probably all agree that the Chancellor's measures have been lacking every step of the way. 
but so too have those of the Scottish Government. When consequentials came to Scotland following the council tax rebate policy, we urged them not to copy the Tories, presented a fully costed plan which recognised the additional cost for priority groups and the need for targeted measures. We would have put £400 in the pockets of those struggling to make ends meet, disabled people, carers, pensioners and low-income families, and the SNP refused. When regulations came to committee, the SNP refused to extend winter heating allowance to all disabled people, despite accepting they had higher costs of fuel. Now even the Tories have recognised the need for targeted support. So for so many groups of people living in poverty, including disabled people, the Scottish Government have failed to do enough too, and for some they've done nothing at all. There's been no specific cost of living support for disabled people, unpaid carers or pensioners. So, President Officer, as I bring my remarks to a close, let me highlight also unpaid carers. Throughout the pandemic, we clapped for them, paid and unpaid. We held them up as key workers, relied on them to pick up the pieces when the state couldn't do it. Have both their governments forgotten the contribution they made? Have, have their memories of how much unpaid carers put in to keep this country going faded, or are they just overlooking their plight? Unpaid carers are likely to have higher energy bills because of the caring responsibilities, and neither government have included them in their packages. It's time the SNP Greens and Tories stepped up to the plate. People across Scotland are struggling. These measures put forward by the UK Government will lighten it slightly, but they will not ease the burden for enough people. The UK Government must go further, and so must the SNP Government here in Scotland. They have powers, and they have not used them enough. So I say to the Minister here today, by all means demand more from the Tories, and we will too. But take your own advice, recognise your own responsibility, and realise that you too must step up for the people of Scotland. Thank you. I now call on the Minister to wind up the debate. Thank you, President Officer, and, and to colleagues. And I appreciate um, this debate was scheduled at, at short notice, and I am I'm so grateful to all members across the chamber uh, for their their times uh, uh, the, their time this afternoon and and um, for their their contributions. Uh, although I, I do think um, the contribution from Mr. Balfour was unnecessarily tribal and uh, critical. This UK government social security additional payments bill is a, a, a bill in order to aim to alleviate the pressures uh, people are experiencing currently due to the cost of living crisis. And while there is clearly a need for, for much more comprehensive package of support using the headroom that the Chancellor has and the extensive fiscal and monetary powers at his disposal, it is important that we here uh, do not cause any delay to the payments getting to those who need them. We want people to get those payments, and that is why we are undertaking this legislative consent motion today. Because the Scottish Government is committed to supporting the delivery of these measures following the Chancellor's statement, and I believe that passing this legislative consent motion is the most efficient and effective way to do so, and it is required because this relates to devolved matters. Given the extremely limited time between the announcement of the measures in the UK Bill and its, and its introduction, the truncated timetable uh, within which the UK Government are legislating uh, it would simply not be feasible to introduce Scottish legislation, as I said in my opening remarks, without the risk of delaying delivery of the provisions, and we want them to happen. We are doing the right thing here, and uh, I, I think the, the, the unnecessary criticism from the Conservative benches are just unhelpful in this scenario when we are trying to collaborate in order to uh, provide assistance to the people of Scotland. I you know, always uh, appreciate that colleagues will push us as a government to, to do as much as we can. That is why we are delivering around £3 billion of support for people in this cost of living crisis. For example, our child winter heating assistance, which is only available in Scotland. For example, our Scottish child payment, which is only available in Scotland. And a wide range of other measures as well, which there is not time to go through today. We do need the UK Government to do more but we want to facilitate what has been announced. And so I would like to close by reiterating this government's call for more action from the UK government to address the unprecedented rise in the cost of living uh, above and beyond what is set out in their bill. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we wish uh, to make sure that we are, facilitate the delivery of that support that has been announced. And it's important that, uh, that this is done so uh, without delay. And therefore, I I urge Parliament to pass this motion. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate on Social Security Additional Payments Bill UK legislation. It is now time to move on to the next item of business, which is consideration of business motion 5144 in the name of George Adam, 
On behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme, any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press their request to speak button now. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. I call on Stephen Kerr to speak to and move Amendment 5144.1. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And what I say now, I say with the utmost respect for you and for the Officer Presiding Officer. But at last week's Bureau meeting, the Minister for Parliamentary Business said in essence to the meeting that the SNP Government will do as it pleases in relation to this Parliament. And they do, and they will for as long as the Greens vote through their every decision. Yeah. It's important that people watching the proceedings of this Parliament know that the business of this Parliament is not decided by Bureau, presiding officer, but is instead dictated to this Parliament by Nicola Sturgeon and her Cabinet. Yeah. This can be seen in the frequent last-minute changes to the business programme after Cabinet meetings, such as today's utterly pointless statement from Angus Robertson, which Trump Bureau's previously agreed plans. Even the Bureau's business programme papers come with a stamp at the bottom of each page reading, Agreed at Cabinet. Sadly, this place is set up, I, and I do mean sadly, I have concluded, this place is set up in such a way as to protect the executive and not scrutinise it. The Cabinet's business motion adds an hour-long statement on an unwanted independence referendum yeah. on Tuesday, which pushes back consideration of the highly contentious COVID power grab bill until even later in the day. And then on Wednesday, there's a 90-minute debate on reserved matters. This time could have been used to actually improve services for the people of Scotland using the many powers available to us in this Parliament. My amendment seeks to remove the grievance mongering and inserts statements on important matters. Moreover, after weeks of avoidable late finishes, my amendment brings some consistency to decision time for those MSPs with younger families. What happened to the lessons learned from MSPs who stood down in 2021, citing the incompatibility of balancing Parliament with a family life? Gail Ross, Ruth Davidson, Jenny Mara, Members. to name but a few. Forgotten, presiding officer, in favour of a business programme double stacked with rushed legislation and the First Minister's grievance bingo card. With Scotland's public services in dire need of rescue, we do not support the Cabinet's additions to next week's business programme. Indeed, we cannot support a business programme forced on this Parliament by an uncompromising Nicola Sturgeon. And that is why I move the amendment in my name. I call on George Adam to respond on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, we discussed all of this at length at the Parliamentary Bureau, and as always, I try to be accommodating to opposition members within the Chamber. Uh, I will, as always, again, Presiding Officer, keep this short and to the point. The Scottish Government will continue to focus its efforts on passing important legislation and representing the people of Scotland. Yeah. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 5144.1 in the name of Stephen Kerr, which seeks to amend Motion 5144 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and there will be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system.